Today we are diving in the Farn Isles, a group of 28 islands situated between 2 and 5 miles off the Northumbrian coast. These islands constitute an important breeding site for many seabirds, including guillemot, razorbill and puffins. And the Farn Isles has one of the most significant seal populations in the United Kingdom. The diving in the Farns is on the whole shallow, with depths ranging from 6 to 25 metres. Diving in the Farns is leisurely, and as we found, well suited for videography and photography. With a bright torch in hand and an ever watchful eye, within the first few minutes of our first dive, we were able to find lobsters and crabs hiding under the rocks. Most of the dive sites in the Farn Isles feature dramatic walls or gullies lined with plumos and enemies, dead men's fingers, and other filter feeders. The resident seals will often join divers to explore the underwater world. Dead men's fingers are a common feature of dives in the UK. They can be found from depths as shallow as the shoreline to down to 50 metres. Their small white tendrils grasp at food as it passes in the current, as they perch on rocks or expose wreckage. With the overt abundance of wildlife in the farns, we also found common sun stars, edible crabs, and many species of sea squirt, including this light bulb sea squirt. The Ballon Rass is a common sight in the Farn Isles. They'll follow divers around, hoping to be fed, either intentionally or accidentally as the divers disturb the silt with their fins. As its name suggests, the common edible sea urchin is abundant in the UK, and particularly so in the Farn Isles. Its long tube feet are used for locomotion, breathing and catching food. At depths of 25 metres, the boulders on the seabed are covered in dead men's fingers and other anemone species. But looking between the rocks and under the boulders, we found shrimp, crab and lobster. It's fair to say there's more life beneath these rocks than there is on their surface. The long-clawed squat lobster is remarkably common in this area. It tends to co-inhabit the spaces under the rocks with other crustacea such as shore crabs, edible crabs and other lobsters. Although usually a shy species, this example was happy to sit on display. This velvet swimming crab is looking for food among the rocks. Velvet crabs don't mind divers getting close, although if you get too close they may show signs of aggression, such as showing off their claws. Although it's not just crustacea that inhabit these rocks, this top-knot flatfish is cleverly disguised as the rock on which it sits. The Farn Isle's grey seal population boasts some 6,000 individuals, and with up to 1,000 new pups born every October and November, there are always plenty of seals for the diver to encounter on their dives. The Farn Isle seals are famous for their curiosity and playful nature in the water. It's always a thrill to encounter a seal on a dive. And spending time with these beautiful creatures is always a pleasure. Sometimes seals will lie on the seabed for a quick nap. 
and they can be found congregating in the gullies and along the walls. When watching seals, they seem to behave in a similar way to puppies and young children. Although most seals do appear to have an affinity for chewing on divers' fins, the seals we met on these dives just seem to want to play. While a playful seal is certainly cute, and some may say cuddly, we must remember these are wild animals in their natural environment. Special care must be taken not to chase or harass these beautiful mammals if we and others are to enjoy their company on dives in the future. The Somali was a 450-foot-long, 6,800-ton Commodore ship that was sunk off Blythe in 1941. She now lies upright around 1.5 miles off Bednell Bay. There is plenty to see on this dive and her wreckage is covered in life. Although fairly broken up, the engine block and boiler still stand around three metres proud of the seabed. Wrecks are inevitably a haven for life as they provide food and shelter for many sea creatures. We found many species of fish on this dive, including wrasse, pollock and bib. Because of the presence of all of these fish, this is a popular site for anglers too, as was evident by the amount of monofilament line found on this wreck. Over the years, divers have found many artefacts where the holds used to be, including tin soldiers, pots and perfume bottles. Winching gear lies on the seabed where the decks have collapsed, and the ghostly remains of the stern superstructure reach out into the water. Unlike the stern, little remains of the bow section in front of the boilers. Around the Farne Isles are many shipwrecks, and over the years, successive collisions with the islands have left many wrecks on top of each other. Most of the island wrecks are very broken up and the majority have been well salvaged. All that now remains are boilers, engine blocks and some tackle. These shallow, protected areas offer a place for seals to develop the skills they'll need for life. Of course, the wreckage is home to other marine wildlife too. There are also many anemones and other species clinging to these structures. Much of the wildlife in the Farne Isles is totally accustomed to the presence of divers. For example, upon our approach, this lobster left its safe hole and went for a short walk, allowing us to follow it. Toward the end of our dives in the shallows, we found many school of pollock among the kelp. In these shallow kelp forests reside a diverse range of life. These bryophytes cling to their fronds in the current, and at their base, crab and lobster species reside. And wherever there's shallow water and kelp, inevitably there'll be seals. Encounters with seals as divers ascend are not uncommon. Just below the surface live blue jellyfish, hoping to catch fry in their stinging tentacles. There is certainly something for everybody here. Whether it's the abundant wildlife above or below the waves, the crystal clear water, or just simply to go scuba diving with seals, there's always a reason to go back to the Farne Isles.